Hey everyone, welcome back to Her Soul Fit. Um, today is the second day of the detox challenge. We are fasting for three days. We have a number of different fasting um, methods that we're using in the community. There are some, as I mentioned uh, yesterday, that are participating in the intermittent fasting method. Um, I would probably guess that that's the majority of the women because it's the most uh, convenient, uh, the most flexible. That is with the sliding eating window. And I presume that that is uh, probably the most enjoyable <laughs> because you don't have to you know, uproot your entire schedule in order to implement it in your lifestyle. So if you're doing that, then you may have already started uh, with your fasting cycle um, on Sunday, already starting with closing your eating window at a particular time, depending on when your eating window on the next day was plan to begin, then you may have already started your fasting cycle on Sunday in order to compensate for that. That means you may have already known that you would want to have a 16-hour fasting cycle, like I'm presuming um, many of you are uh, doing, a 16-hour fasting cycle with an 8 our eating window. And if that's the case, then you most likely start on Sunday and then, you know, presumed into Monday. And if, depending on where you're joining, that's the case, you may have already gone through two fasting cycles already, right? You may have already experienced your fasting cycle, your eating window twice. This is the second day. And so I'm interested to know what your experiences are. But for those of you who are tuning in and you don't know what I do, I am Jennifer Lipscomb and I help black menopausal women with a sweet tooth lose fat, particularly on a plant-based diet, partly or fully without skipping dessert. And so we are doing this detox in order to jumpstart our fat loss journey, particularly during the holidays. I know it may be tricky for some, but I think it's a fabulous idea because it gives you the opportunity to test how that is to abstain from food with all the temptations that we have during the holiday and to implement the cycle and get a feeling for whether or not you are able to implement this, if this benefits you, if you are able to deal with going longer periods of time without the food. And so now that we're going to begin, I want to just say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who are either joining today, who are tuning into the replay, who are um, you know, just stumble across the channel. Today we hit over a thousand subscribers. So I just want to thank each and every one of you. I am thrilled. I am truly humbled because I want to reach as many women as possible in order to support each of you during your fat loss journey. You may have already started with the fasting window. The eating window is very central to my theme to my program, to my mini course and to the Belly Be Gone course. And getting started with fasting for the first time may be new for some of you. It may be something that you've already been doing and maybe still having trouble adapting to it, getting results from it. And if that's the case, then that's how I feel I could help you you know, sort of accompany you. And if you have difficulty, then we can kind of work through it together. And this community is also 
uh, available for each and every one of us, including myself, to hear from one another and understand what each of us are going through and how we're dealing with each of the challenges and uh, positive results, um, uh, you know, how we're able to get through it and how we can help one another and inspire one another in order to get us to overcome these challenges or just to continue on with the journey and not give up because it's about consistency. And once the consistency is set in place, once you are able to continue on with your journey um, on an automated level, then you start to see the results. So thank you so much for each of you for subscribing to the channel. Um, I really do believe that as this community starts to grow, that we will benefit even more. We'll be able to uh, communicate with one another, exchange, and I will definitely be pumped, be very excited and thrilled to continue to provide content that I think will help us all um, and will inspire and support you in all of the ebbs and flows of your journey. So, um, hi, Kamitha. Thank you so much for joining again. So happy to see you here again during these live coaching calls. Um, this is, of course, the second day that you are, are joining. And I will most definitely be asking you what your experiences have been. Maybe you feel comfortable putting in the live chat where your experiences have been, but I just want to see what you're saying. You say, hi, I'm on day two of the fast and you're doing a 16 hour intermittent fasting window. Exactly. This is exactly <laughs> what you mentioned yesterday. And right now you're eating. That's great. Use this in the background while you're eating feasting. I like to say feasting because when you are you know, overcoming your fasting cycle, you're on the other end and you've opened up your eating window, then it's really an opportunity for you to enjoy the food, of course, but also to get a sense in this time, mindfully, how your hunger signals, and that's what we're going to talk about today. That's a, a lot of what I want to concentrate on today, how your hunger signals were sort of fluctuating, right? Until you got up until your eating window. And then once you're eating, it's a time for you to fully enjoy it. You know, hopefully you have some really good food that either, you know, you have prepared yourself or, you know, none of our business if you don't want to share what you're eating, if you're eating something completely different than what you would, you know, I don't know, be proud of, or which is not maybe serving your fat loss journey, that's okay. Because it's not right now specifically about, um, you know, the food that you're eating. It is ultimately about the food that you're eating. And if you've already sort of adjusted to um, tweaking your nutrition in such a way that it is, um, you know, you're in a better position to serve your body, you know, your, the nutrients of the food are serving you best and the meals that you have now, then that is terrific. But it's also terrific if that's not, <laughs> you know, what you're concentrating on, but instead you're concentrating on just understanding the eating window window and if it's the best for you. Um, good. So I hope you're enjoying your meal and, <laughs> Guten Appetit is what we would say here in Germany. Um, Ola Yinka, hello. Welcome to the live Detox Fast coaching call. So happy that you've joined. Um, you said, I've just seen a notification for this video and it spoke to me. Then welcome. So happy to have you here and so glad that you already started to engage in the live chat um, on such short notice. I've been wanting to sort of spread the message about this detox fast because I think it's really the most beneficial for women when they're starting their fat loss journey because 
it allows you, like I talked a little bit about yesterday, it allows you to really ease it seamlessly into your schedule. Like Kamitha just said, um, she finished her fasting cycle and now her eating window has opened up at 12 o'clock. She's eating now while she's watching this live. And it gives you sort of a sense that you can kind of, you know, as you're sliding your eating window, that's what I like to refer to this, um, you know, intermittent fasting, because it's really about you adjusting it and tweaking it to best serve you. And because you're able to do that, because it's so flexible, you know, having this eating window, it's the most beneficial for us as menopausal women, because we don't have to struggle with trying to figure out what fasting schedule we're on today. Now, later in the game, it can be that you maybe get a little bit more refined in your fasting, um, which means you might do maybe longer extended fasts, or you might want to, you know, sort of switch it up and do a 24 hour fast um, and then eat and then, you know, fast again, like the five two schedule. But until you're feeling more comfortable and maybe until you plateau, because there might be a point where you might plateau with your results while you're on the fasting cycle and you may need to adjust and you will want to know, you know, how to go about adjusting your cycle. But until you get to that point, then, you know, coming in with a an eating window where you can kind of play around with with when you start, when you end is really an easy and efficient tool for, you know, just kind of dipping in and getting your your toes wet and understanding what the process is and how the process works. So thank you uh, for sharing that. And again, thank you, Olainka, for in, uh, joining us today. Um, Kamitha says, drinking lots of water and taking my supplements. Oh, she's got supplements. Girl, what supplements are you taking? Are you taking regular multivitamins? Because I'd be interested to know. I'm always kind of switching them up depending on, you know, what's going on, like, you know, physically with me. And when I hear other people actually taking supplements, I just want to know what their experiences are. I did have a multivitamin, um, like from A to Z, um, you know, tablet that I was taking for months, for months. And then I pulled back on that. I did that because my iron was very low. Um, I'm eating primarily a plant-based diet. And I was noticing with my energy levels, they were really low. And so I decided to, um, you know, take on more vitamins, um, you know, increase my, my iron. And then I just started taking iron tablets by themselves. And that was really helpful right away, you, you know, reap the benefits from the iron tablets. But I also noted there were some side effects that, you know, I wasn't too thrilled about, like, you know, your bowels change, and you have to figure that all out. And um, there were some other, you know, side effects of that. So I really am interested how others are doing it. So thanks for sharing and, and really great that you're hydrating, because that's also something I wanted to talk about today especially when you're in the intermittent fasting cycle, you know, when you have your fasting cycle and your eating window, things have not really changed so much from your regular diet. You do have to get used to, you know, overcoming the hunger period once you close your window and also get used to not constantly grazing in the kitchen because once your eating window closes, then, you know, you don't have access, you know, you know, to, access. I mean, at any given time you can switch up, but you're committed to it. You're committed to not snacking um, mindlessly. And therefore, you know, there's a level of, um, you know, a, a challenge or hurdle that you have to overcome. And, and that is, you know, a part of the, the intermittent fasting um, cycle. And, and, you know, that is something that once you adapt to it, you also get used to how and and what the signals are and what sort of, um, you know, tips or strategies that you use to tweak that or to overcome that. 
But what the supplements and the hydration on the day before the fast, okay, you were doing that helped with hunger pains. Okay. So you already started to kind of address um, what you're doing in order to um, deal with hunger, you know, cause that's, that's basically what my topic is today. So I'm glad to hear that, that the hydration is key. And that's part of what my answer to you would have been. Um, it definitely starts with water. It definitely starts with water. Okay. So Kamithis continues to say, I'm still learning how to eat plant-based. So I need help eventually on how to cook animal protein substitutes at home. You know, Kamitha, it's interesting because I do eat fully plant-based. I did share my story about why I primarily eat um, only veggies, only plants. And it's not because it was something natural that came to me or that I'm trying to, you know, save the planet, save the animals and all the effects that come with that, you know, the impact on our ecosystem and all of that. That wasn't my initial reason or my initial mission for starting to eat, uh, you know, plants. Um, I do like that it does have a positive impact on our environment, on our, um, you know, ecosystem and all that on our planet that I'm primarily eating plants. But I totally get it when others continue to eat um, animal protein, because that's what they enjoy. That's how they thrive. That's how they maybe feel, you know, the, the best physically. And I'm completely fine with that and applaud those who know exactly what's the best for them and to not get easily influenced to do a diet that they're not yet comfortable with, or that they're not comfortable with at all. And so you, I think, can continue to dabble with it and, and, and eat as you're doing now, eating more plant-based. I think that is phenomenal because it's not such an easy thing to do in the beginning. And what I wanted to say with me, although, you know, I, I am eating primarily plant-based now, it didn't start off that way. It was really a decision that came as a result of my skin issues when I entered perimenopause, the perimenopausal phase, because you know, I, I wasn't able to get rid of increasing weight gain and I was having issues with my skin and I just didn't know how to, to, to deal with it, how to address it until I went to the, my skin doctor and, you know, did a little bit of um, investigation and found out that it had to do with histamine intolerance. And once I knew that, I realized then, or I could start at that time figuring out how to deconstruct, you know, a little bit um, what my diet had to look like in order to um, help with the histamine intolerance. Um, you know, I, I had, there was a woman, um, I think she's called Healing Histamine. She's actually, she's passed away now, but she has a terrific website. And on that website, I had the same symptoms basically that she did. And I just basically followed um, a lot of, you know, her diet suggestions, her diet recommendations. And that's how I got into the idea that, you know, I would have to eliminate um, a lot of meat, a lot of dairy products in order to start to heal my body from within, because my body having eczema or neurodermatitis or, um, you know, I don't know how else it's called all over the world, but um, I needed to do that. I needed to eliminate dairy. It was, um, you know, causing a lot of inflammation inside, which was showing up on my skin. And that was actually essential for, for healing it. And so that's where I started. That's why I started in that way. Why do I tell this whole long story? Because I get it with the meat. It's actually the quickest way you know, to, to get your protein, if you're trying to build and maintain muscle, then, you, you know, eating meat is um, perhaps the quickest, the quickest way to go. But for me, um, you know, it's, there are a lot of other 
uh, things connected to eating meat, like um, high cholesterol, for example, and things like that, that it was important for me to continue on. I didn't have to eliminate completely, um, you know, the meat and the dairy out of my diet. I could have, you know, um, had it on one day and then left it out the other. But for me, it was all or nothing. So I'm basically, you know, an all or nothing person. And it was easier for me then to sort of filter it out because I knew if I kind of dabbled with it, I probably would go for the meat you know, most of the time and the dairy, because I loved cheese, you know, and I, I loved uh, pizza with cheese and lasagna with cheese and, you know, everything. Cheese was just a filler ingredient for me for a lot of different dishes. So I love that stuff and can totally relate um, to you, Kamitha, but I think it's you're a great start that you're sort of, you know, increasing plants more and more and, watching um, different videos on YouTube, of course, will certainly help with you in inspiring you with different recipes. And I would go for, in the beginning, the, the simplest and also the, the most enticing, you know, the ones that you really enjoy and you like, the ones that are maybe rich that, you know, are at first maybe comforting foods so that you don't feel as though you're missing out. That's that's what I did, that's what I continue to do. If I feel as though I'm not getting enough substance for my diet, or you know, because I just don't feel full, or I don't feel as though the food is pleasing me or satisfactory to me, and then I start to add you know, more comfort foods. Um, and that may, in a lot of cases, include some processed processed ingredients. Like if I want to make a lasagna, then I don't have vegan cheese um, all throughout the lasagna, but I do top it off with vegan cheese. Um, I also make my own plant-based cheese um, to put on top, but sometimes I, you know, or maybe often I just want to have the vegan cheese because it's quicker, it's more convenient. And I don't want things like that to get in the way of my eating habits, you know, to, you know, prevent me from continuing to meal prep if I need to do something on the quick or if I want something comforting and I add certain ingredients that are not necessarily 100% vegan, um, I'm, it's okay. You know, I'm, I'm fine with doing that if I know that the meal that I'm creating is going to satisfy me and it's going to keep me motivated and consistent. So, I definitely understand where you're coming from. And Kamitha, I, I applaud you that you're that you're trying to do it. Because I do want to also serve, you know, women, support women who are doing the partly plant-based diet still, um, who have not yet weaned or will never wean completely off of animal fat. Because I I think, you know, the more you increase your diet with veggies, um, you know, with plants and particularly whole foods, then you'll notice the benefits and you won't necessarily be um, tempted to eat processed food because your taste buds change. They're, they're different. They're not as, um, you know, uh, hooked on that food that's highly palatable the meats and cheeses and everything that we that we love, they are also highly palatable and particularly dairy because it's very intense and rich in its flavor in a lot of the cases, there's also casein and that I, I know that you might be familiar with casein and that there are studies on it that it has addictive um, you know, elements to it. That's why people love cheese because there's that casein in it that's causing this you know, d dopamine spike and us to, you know, continue to turn back to it. So there are a number of things that reinforce my decision to stay away from the animal fat or the animal protein, but I still, um, you know, want to support and still want to, um, you know, help or assist or even encourage women to continue on with their diets as they are, including, you know, animal protein or animal fat as they need to, and to adjust it as they go along and, and recognize the benefits of the other types of foods so that they can 
you know, hit their targets. They can reach their results much quicker because they're motivated and consistent because they haven't had to change the foods that they now love, right? Maybe we'll change later, but right now is key to stick with as many, um, you know, factors that you have going on with your diet and with your lifestyle so that you, um, you know, are at ease, that it's not stressful for you to continue on in your, in your journey, along your journey. Okay. That was a long winded answer, but, um, I think you, you got what I meant. Um, let's see here. Ola Inca and Ola Inca, am I pronouncing your name right? Right. Is it Ola Inca or Ola Inca? Oh, yeah, I guess you can't really tell me that on live chat, but Okay, I hope I'm not butchering your name too much. It's a beautiful name. Um, I'm not presently. Yes, it is Oleinka. Okay, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, she says, I'm not presently fasting. I just returned from a family event over the weekend where I wore a lovely kaftan so as to not stress over this midsection of mine. <laughs> we do what we have to do, don't we? I know. And that's so great that you could enjoy life and be with your family and celebrate, you know, togetherness. That's what it's all about anyway. So, yeah, um, I mentioned to the members in, in the group that it might not be the right time, you know, for for you to fast because of life events, of work. Maybe you have some some meetings. I don't know, you know, who is doing a nine to five here or, you know, who is, um, you know, has just a very busy schedule or requires a lot of high performance. I don't know, you know, all of those analytics of the community, but I do know that when you start a fast, it's important to be aware of what your schedule looks like, including, you know, events, family events, because you don't want to start something and then have to like, you know, break it up. You certainly can. And it's no problem if you start and then you realize, oh, you know, it was, it was too much for me. I'm overwhelmed with it. I can't deal with it. It's, you know, over and beyond what I'm capable of doing right now for whatever reason. You certainly can try something and then pull back. But it's good if you commit to something to start with a, a clean slate and with planning so that you can, you know, be more aware of what the, um, you know, the benefits are and the, the challenges will be. So to reduce a lot of hurdles, basically, so that you can fully engage in the process of fasting. And so, yeah, of course, it would not have made sense for you to, to participate right now. You still can get in on the, the tail end if you want. I know that there were a uh, two, um, uh, members yesterday, two fasters from yesterday's call, who said um, they're doing the intermittent fasting and they 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 hope to continue on with it. I think it's looking very promising for the both of them um, because uh, the the one had already started before this fasting challenge and has recognized the benefits of it. So you can even start today. Um, you know cutting your eating window to a particular, um, you know, a, a cycle or time, you know, cut it off earlier than you normally would have, and then start, you know, even tomorrow, um, sort of identifying the, the time blocks, which are best for you with your cycle, whether you want to have a 12 hour fast or a 14 hour fast or a 16 hour fast, but whatever the case may be, if you have not already, you can grab the fasting guide. Um, I have a link in the description notes below. You can click on that where I sort of go into detail about the different types of fast. You can choose which one is best for you. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, a good number of the participants are doing the intermittent fasting method. Um, I happen to be doing the extended fast. I think the extended fast is more for um, those who have done fasting in the past, have maybe a little bit more experience with it and are comfortable with doing the fast, even with 
um, you know, the holidays going on. Um, but if you're new to fasting, then you may want to ease into it. That's what I suggest really for beginners. And um, there are tips in the fasting guide that can help you. So you, you can uh, sort of jump in on the tail end and continue on. That's what the whole purpose is really to kickstart your fat loss journey um, using the sliding e eating window, which is what I like to refer to it as, to support you as you reach your goal. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Ola Inka says, I'd love to learn more about the detox fast and how it works. Yes. Um, as I mentioned, you can um, click on the link that in the description notes that has the fasting guide um, there. And then you can sort of review the, the guide. Um, I am going to go into it a little bit today. I know I'm so long winded. I don't want to, you know, get too much off track um, because I did want to go through a little bit of it today. But I know that I also want to address maybe questions that you have and also ask you questions about how your fast is going on. So depending on, you know, the exchange that we have in the live chat, I might be able to get through a big portion of it. I certainly will go over more of it during our call tomorrow. Um, Olayinka says again, why or how is intermittent fasting helpful for our bodies and what is the 5-2 cycle? Okay, so intermittent fasting is good for our bodies because particularly as menopausal women, because as you have a fast, um, as long as it's at least 12 hours or more, then your body starts to regulate the blood sugar. The blood sugar in our body is important um, because it has an impact on our insulin. And insulin is really playing a big role in how we're able to lose fat. So as menopausal women, as our estrogen starts to go down, even if you're in the perimenopausal stages, you know, our, our hormones are fluctuating, but estrogen is starting to decrease. When that happens, we as menopausal women become more insulin resistant which is very depressing. <laughs> it's, it's really, um, you know, challenging for us because we need to learn a new way of adjusting to the changes in our body. And when that happens, when the estrogen goes down and we become more insulin resistant, that means it's harder for our bodies to utilize the sugar that we get from our food as efficiently as we did before. And our bodies also at this, at this time starts to redistribute the fat that we have. And it's mostly around our midsection. So you always have the middle age bulge, um, you know, that you hear often with um, health care experts or women who are having issues and they want to know why, why am I gaining this, you know, weight in my midsection, mostly these are women that are over the age of 40 because they've entered into that, you know, menopausal phase where the hormones are starting to fluctuate and estrogen, estrogen plays a big part or impacts our insulin at this time the most. Before then, our estrogen is high and we notice that those things that we did before were more effective um, in working against fat loss. But now as we age, it gets harder and harder. Um, when estrogen goes down, we also lose bone dis density. We lo lose muscle mass. And muscle mass plays a very big part in metabolism because our muscles use a lot of sugar, right? And so if we have more muscle, we're able to use the, the sugar that our body consumes with the foods that we eat. And, um, you know, that's how our body is able to regulate the blood sugar well. That's why exercising is important because we're using those muscles. We want to maintain those muscles, but it's just not the complete answer, right, in the equation. So we really want to use inter intermittent fasting because we're able to create a fasting cycle that will tap into our fat stores and it's best done during the fasting cycle than with any other tool for losing fat. 
Um, and because it plays such a huge role also with improving our health, it's really important that we as menopausal women continue with this type of method because we're able to um, increase our health markers with this type of tool. Okay, I hope that that answered uh, your question as to why we're starting with um, the fast right now, this detox fast in order to kickstart our journey and also why intermittent fasting in general is important. And also you said, what is the 5-2 cycle? The 5-2 cycle is basically when you think of a week, you have uh, seven days and um, five of those seven days, you're eating a regular diet. You know, you're eating your regular meals that you normally would. You may vary the calories, you know, tweak here and there, maybe lower than, maybe not eat as much as you normally would, but you're consuming food normally over that time period, these the five days. And the five days are not necessarily consecutive days. They're actually, um, you know, sort of spread or distributed throughout the week because two of those days, you're going to fast for a period of 24 hours. And those two days, that you're fasting are not consecutive. So you may go two days of eating regularly and then you fast. Then you go another two days of eating regularly and then you fast again and then you eat normal for whatever days that complete the week. So that's what the 5-2 cycle is. And that's also a method that you can use. Um, I, I talked about it before that when there are various fasting methods, in, you know, available that you can choose from. Sometimes for the beginner or for a woman who's desperately struggling to lose fat, it can be difficult to implement because you maybe don't see the results right away. Um, you'll see them over a period of time, but when you are cutting back the calories on a more regular basis, as you do with intermittent fasting, then you are likely to see results much quicker. So you can use the 5-2 um, method, and I would suggest that you sort of ease into it. Of course, you can start at any given time that you feel comfortable. Um, that could be sooner than later. Um, but the purpose really is to sort of get used to abstaining from food in general, and then vary, vary, varying your different fasts or fasting cycles or fasting methods so that you can maybe get out of a plateau that you may be having. Um, there are various reasons, but for the purpose of this, um, this detox fast that we're doing now, this challenge, I really just wanted to sort of focus in on the basic fasts. Um, extended fast is not a basic one that is more than 72 hours. And it is um, harder maybe to, you know, go through than the 5-2 cycle. But nonetheless, um, it is a simple one because you just abstain from food. You don't have to plan, you know, any particular schedule, you know, for three days in a row, you're not eating. So you're basically just hydrating the whole time. Let me do that right now. Wanted to drink during the call. Mm. You're basically hydrating while you're abstaining from food. Very important for any fast that you're doing, you're having at least two to three liters of water a day, regardless of what your eating habits are. But that's why these basic fasts where you don't have to think about the schedule, you don't have to plan anything. You basically just have your easy, doable, well doable, depending on what type of fast you have, schedule uh, without too much um, complexity, right? It's not as com complicated. You don't have to figure, oh wait, is today a day that I'm supposed to fast or not? Yes, you can simply take a calendar and put it in. But once you're in the rhythm of fasting, then you may not necessarily want to come back out and then eat right away, especially if you start to notice results, right? And we'll talk a little bit about the types of results that you see. So the 5-2 one, it really requires discipline, you know, maybe more of a routine. And I would say 
what's best for a routine is starting first with a fast that you can easily do and then changing it up as you go along and feel more comfortable with fasting in general. Um, let's see here. So Kamitha says, I take a woman's multivitamin, krill oil, um, COQ, is that coenzyme? I forget what that stands for, 10. And alfalfa, okay, I'm concerned about my heart health and my allergies and inflammation. Okay, and that's the reason why you're taking those multivitamins or those supplements to help you with that. And I don't know if you um, sort of did your own research and then went out and got the supplements, in which case you know yourself what they all are um, you know, responsible for, what they're uh, helping you with. It could be that you were in consultation with a healthcare specialist and then they recommended these supplements. But it sounds as though you are trying things that you probably have read about and you're familiar about and that are possibly bringing you benefits. And so that's really good if you know that the supplements that you're taking, what they're um, specifically um, going to help you with, you know, not obviously randomly just taking supplements for the sake of taking them. I, I'm sure that that's not what you're doing, but it's good to know what they're good for. And especially if you're interested in heart health, I don't know if you have an underlying condition or a precondition um, with your heart, but um, certainly aside from those supplements, fasting really supports, um, you know, our physical condition because it, it helps with all of the different um, physiological um, uh, elements, uh, factors that we discussed, um, all, uh, you know, coming up to the fast that are really helpful for, you know, your body, your health status and heart is, is one of them. Um, especially as black menopausal women, because we are high risk, not only for insulin resistance, but also for heart disease. And so um, depending on what heart um, conditions you're referring to, but we know that high cholesterol from animal fat and animal uh, protein, because there's, you know, fat tissue within meat, um, even if it's lean meat, um, but still that contributes to high cholesterol. And so um, when you have high cholesterol, that definitely um, puts you at a disadvantage when it comes to heart health, but doesn't necessarily mean that your heart is unhealthy. Uh, not at all. Because, you know, there are plenty of people out there consuming animal protein and animal fat and, and thriving. So I don't want to put the message out there that, um, you know, you're unhealthy in the sense, not at all, because you are on such a great path. And I'm, you know, not sure where you are with your heart health, but these are some considerations um, that you may want to uh, take to mind that, um, you know, decreasing your animal fat or um, increasing your fast uh, could help you with your heart, uh, certainly support it more so than any other type of diet change that other than, you know, uh, eliminating animal fat, uh, which would lower your cholesterol. But other than that, um, you know, keeping your diet in the way that it is, then fasting can support you the most towards your, um, your, your goals with your heart health. Um, let's see here. Also with allergies and inflammation, fasting is key. And the longer you fast, the better in terms of reducing your inflammation um, and going into those fat stores, because the longer you fast, obviously the fat stores that have been sort of pumped up with all the sugar that we've been eating over, you know, days, months, years that have stored in there start to reduce the longer we fast and over a period of time. Also with the inter intermittent fasting, the more you go on, it's sort of like chipping away, you know, at a block. It goes a little bit slower because we're still feeding ourselves with, um, you know, foods that may be high in sugar or that have, you know, carbs in them and whatever's left over, it will then be stored as fat. But still, 
excuse me, nonetheless, um, we're working on it more and more the longer we continue with this type of fasting method. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> okay, hola. Hola, Inca. Hola, Inca. Hola, Inca is your name. <laughs> it's a beautiful name. Thank you for explaining that. And yes, you're welcome for the link. Um, feel free to, you know, check out the fasting guide. Like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit about it today. I hope I'm not too far off um, with the time. But uh, we will get to some of the points. Um, is there anything else? Kamitha says, uh, and vitamin D. That, great. Yeah, for bone health. Because we know as, as menopausal women, you know, as we age, we lose bone density. And vitamin D is very good for supporting that, among other things. Um, I don't get a lot of sun after November. Ah, yeah. Okay. You don't get a lot of sun. Is that because you don't go out then as often or because of, you know, the shorter sun cycle? Well, the sun has the same cycle, but because we don't have as long of sunny days as we do in the summer, is that what you mean? Um, because yeah, I, you know, if one is not prone to going out in all types of weather outside, then we are going to miss out on a lot of sun, which, you know, helps to build vitamin D in our skin, which gives us, um, you know, helps us with our bone building. Um, oh, Ola Inca says, thank you for the clear explanations. You're absolutely welcome. So hoping that it's helping in any way possible. Um, feel free to continue asking questions, leaving comments um, here during the live chat, but also in my regular content that I, um, you know, send out weekly from, from YouTube. This week is a little bit different because we have these lives um, if I'm able to get out another video this week, then, you know, you'll see one of the typical um, uh, videos that I send out with a different theme. But um, I think because it's this detox fast that the three videos that I have will be these coaching calls that I won't start again until next week with um, my regular uh, weekly videos. Mm, Mizuba says, hi, Mizuba. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, don't worry about being late. So good that you joined. Um, I wanted to um, address a point that I mentioned yesterday during our call. Um, thank you for joining. So glad that you're with us. Um, you mentioned, oh, having challenges with electricity supply. Don't worry at all. Um, I was actually having problems with renovations. I'm so glad that they have stopped. Um, during one of the calls, there was a lot of noise going on. It was crazy. And when I did the replay, just to see if I touched on the points in the fasting guide to know what to discuss later, it wasn't in yesterday's call. Or no, was it? Yeah, I think it was in yesterday's call. Or maybe it was the kickoff that we had for the fast. There was a lot of background noise. So there's always going to be something, whether it's electricity issues or, you know, uh, sounds in the background. Girl, we're in the community, so it's all good. Somebody will be able to uh, reach out to you if you're wanting to know what the missed information was or, you know, you can always replay this video, of course, but we're within the family, so it's all good. We're not going to um, have to say sorry or, you know, excuse ourselves for anything. It's all good. We're you know, we're supporting each other and we don't have to apologize for any of um, the issues that we come across. But, um, oh, and before I forget, oh, Kamitha says, appreciate the thorough answers. 
Yes, thank you for appreciating them because I know I can be long-winded and maybe go a little bit off track. So um, I'll try to get a little bit more um, concise with my answer so I don't hold up the call too long and we can sort of go through any questions that people have much quicker. But yes, um, I try to maybe you know explain a little bit more in detail so that there is a, a link, a clear understanding of, you know, how our systems work and how things, um, you know, relate to each other so that it makes sense everything, sort of from, from a more holistic approach of understanding everything. Mazuba says she's going to watch the video later from the beginning. Okay, great. Oh, what I wanted to say, Mazuba, before I forget, you said that you are from uh, South Africa, from uh Johannesburg. And I wanted to say, because yesterday I said, um, if you notice um, any challenges or even benefits from being in South Africa, because I think most of the women joining are from the US, you might be from other areas. Um, if you are, then I'm happy to hear from you where you're coming from. Feel free to throw it in the chat. Um, I love to know who's all a part of this community. As I mentioned in the way beginning, we are now over a thousand in our community. And I'm so grateful to each and every one of you from joining and um, allowing us to grow together. It's such a, a great experience um, to be able to grow together with you as a group, as a community. And also, um, yeah, that you sort of trust that you're getting information that could be helpful. That is really important to me. I don't take it lightly. Um, I am very, um, you know, passionate about this concept about fasting and about losing fat. So um, I'm happy to continue supporting you the way that I that I can that's best for you. Um, and that I can only know from you responding and from you engaging in um, possibly any areas that you're having difficulty with, you know, engaging in the live chat or in comments and letting me know what issues you want to know more about, what topics I should address. Um, that's a very good way to sort of support each other, encourage one another, and to provide information that we all can benefit from. Um, but going back to Mizuba and South Africa, um, we're all from different places. I am from the U.S., but I'm, I've been living in Germany since 2002. And I asked you yesterday if you've had any challenges or benefits with your journey because of you know, the area where you are. And the reason why I mentioned that is because um, when I first came to Germany, what I noticed was there is a huge difference <laughs> with, um, you know, how the grocery stores are set up, you know, what foods are being offered and um, how people eat, you know, what their um, way of eating, their, their culture, you know, around eating is uh, different than the U.S., similar in a lot of ways, but there are a lot of differences that I noticed sort of added later to actually in good positive ways supporting my fat loss journey. And why I say that is because when I visit the States, when I'm there visiting my family and I go to the grocery store, first of all, the food is crazy expensive. Why? Why is the food so expensive in the States? Like, I don't remember that. In fact, I lived there basically all my life. I've been here in Germany only since uh, 2002. But for some reason, um, I just forget that the food was so expensive. And I am I know that there are a lot of economical and political reasons as to why food has gone up. The prices in food have gone up and in other, you know, other commodities, other products. But... I'm always so amazed when I'm there, how the food prices compare to here in Germany. So that didn't stop me, of course, from eating all the food. You know, I got all the things. They have a selection for everything, like tenfold, twentyfold, like like a chocolate bar has like maybe a hundred different types and vegan and non-vegan. Whereas here in Germany, the selections are not as broad, you know, are, are, there aren't so many selections compared to in the States, right? 
So that was actually helpful. When I look back at choices that I, you know, made when I was in the States, girl, I was eating all kinds of stuff that I should not be eating. If you know the States, you know, and you know how that is, you go into, I don't know, Walmart or Target, Target. Oh my gosh, Target. There is no Target in Germany at all. There's no Target in Germany. Um, the closest thing they have, kind of, sort of, is TK Maxx, you know, in the States it's TJ Maxx. And that's sort of like, um, you know, a lifestyle store where you can get clothes, but also, you know, some food and then a little bit of household stuff. It's actually one of my favorite stores here. It's the one that's the most, um, you know, the one that I can relate to the most in terms of stores compared to the States. But I, I love stores here in Germany, don't get me wrong, but the food um, differs tremendously. And that has helped me in a sense, I must say, because the selections are not so broad. So I can't, you know, when I go in the store and I'm looking for something, most times it's not there. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of, there are, they have a, a lot of food here and there are a lot of choices, and especially with vegan products, they are getting more and more sophisticated. You know, they have a lot of different products also from the States. Like I think Veo Life is from the States, right? Um, and other products, I don't know what other ones they have. A lot of them, most of them are possibly German. Um, but they also have Beyond Meat, for example, those kind of things. So when I want to have like, you know, alternative meat uh, substitutes or, um, you know, alternative cheese, alternative dairy products like creams and stuff like that, or plant milk, um, they have, they have a lot of, of that. And that's, that's great because I, you know, I need to be able to still create my food, create my meals in an enjoyable way. And so a lot of those products help. Um, even if I have increased my, um, whole foods and, you know, the veggies and the plants that I'm eating, and I like to eat more of that, I would say 80% of my, of the meals that I, that I have, have, whole foods in them. So like my desserts have whole foods in them mostly. Um, and yeah, my regular meals that I have then, um, yeah, see, I got off track. So I forgot where I was going with that. But anyway, those are the differences that I noticed with, um, being here in Germany compared to being in the States. So I'm curious if anyone else has noticed, you know, depending on where you're living, if the, the culture sort of helps um, your fat loss journey because the foods are maybe more whole food, you know, related or based, um, maybe the, the culture is such that they're really into health and they want to make sure that, you know, what they have on the market is um, cleaner than let's say what they have in the U S which there are all kinds of, there's a, there's a broad range. There's whole food selections all the way to the most chemical <laughs> based foods you can get on the market. Um, but nonetheless, um, just checking the time. I didn't even touch on the fasting uh, guide. Nonetheless, I'd be interested to know how, where you live and, and, you know, the foods that you have access to, whether it's in South Africa or wherever else um, anyone in the community is living, wherever else you're living, how that's played an impact on your eating habits. Okay, so to drink more uh, water. My lips are getting very dry from talking so much. Good. Okay. And so all I see, good. Okay. So I've gone through all of them. Um, I think I've addressed most of, um, you know, the points that, um, you know, were in the live chat. I wanted to ask you all questions about what status you're in right now, hunger, and how you're dealing with hunger. Are you having difficulties during your fasting cycle to 
overcome the hunger periods? Are your hunger periods fluctuating? Are you noticing, could be that some of you um, who are here or who will um, look at the replay are actually doing the 72 hour fast, the extended fast, and you're noticing that, excuse me, the hunger periods are very difficult to negotiate, to, to, to handle, then I would, I would like to hear from you if that was a reason to stop fasting or if you actually were able to um, continue on because you implemented maybe some of the strategies um, that I mentioned here and they're very short, you know, distractions and, um, you know, maybe going out for a walk or, you know, exercising, what have you. But I'd be interested to know um, how you handle a hunger period, because that's really important. That's actually, you know, a very big part of fasting, you know, especially if you're just starting for the first time and you know that you're going to be abstaining from food, you will want to know how you're going to handle these periods of hunger. So I'd be interested to know how you're dealing with that. Also, what are your, your symptoms now? So yesterday, for example, I started with headaches. I had a headache yesterday during the day. I completely did not eat. I abstained completely from food from the, the day before in the evening. Um, and, you know, throughout the day and during the afternoon, I started to get a headache. And, you know, I, I was hydrating. I may have hydrated maybe um, a little bit later in the day. And that's why the headache um, came about. But, um, you know, I, I noticed right away and I noticed also in the past that because I'm eliminating certain foods from my diet, whether it's coffee, because I, I drink occasionally coffee, or it could be that I'm in a cycle, a, a sugar cycle, that's not the case. Um, as of late, I do, you know, enjoy every once in a while, or, you know, maybe even more often than not, desserts with friends in the cafe, or even if I go to the grocery store, and I pick up something, you know, for my daughter or whatever, then I do enjoy, um, you know, sweets. And in that case, if I'm in a cycle, then I will get headaches if I stop cold turkey the next day. So even with eating, you know, that could be the case that your body is depleted of energy, and then you start to get headaches. And that's what I experienced yesterday. Also, along with a peak in my hunger, you know, towards the end of the day, I was um, starting to feel weak. And I noticed that I was hungrier um, than, than normal, obviously, because I have no food in my system, or I had no food. And when I went on my walk, I started to feel a little bit weaker. When I did my exercise in the beginning of the day, it was no problem because I still had, you know, some glycogen still, you know, in my muscles or in, you know, um, available, to be used for the exercising. So you don't really start to notice it until your fast extends, maybe longer than 12 hours or, or 14 hours, what have you. So those were some of the things I noticed, you know, weakness. I didn't get dizzy or anything like this. And when I went on my walk, I was able to complete, complete it without, you know, feeling faint or anything, but I noticed that I was hungry and I did have a headache. Um, I noticed also that I had some bloating going on. Um, it could be because my bowels are maybe, um, you know, still sort of adapting or, or adapting, um, you know, to that metabolic switching. Um, but, you know, whatever the case may be, I experienced these fasting and they were uh, uh, symptoms and they were directly related to the fasting um, for that period of time. Okay, so... There was another question as well. How are you tracking your results? And have you noticed any results so far? If you're on an extended fast, then you probably have, you know, the, the fat loss is, you know, immediate. Like you, you notice already um, that you drop a little bit. It could be that it's water weight in a lot of the cases, um, but you do notice that there are maybe your bloating goes down, you know, um, and you maybe feel some other um, some other uh, results, positive ones, maybe in terms of your hunger signals, maybe you start to crave 
real food more. You're not thinking because you're hungry, really, that, you know, an Oreo cookie is going to help you. you. You really kind of start to shy away from that. And that was one of the things that um, I wanted to impress upon women in the, com- in the community that when you're doing a longer extended fast or even the intermittent fasting where you have a, a cycle where you've gone longer without eating than normal, then your taste buds start to change. Like I said, you start to crave food um, that has that's much more nutrient dense. Your body starts to already, you know, sort of wean out that that taste or that desire for the sugar or foods that have chemicals in it or you know a lot of fat or sodium. You just want to go to the basics. So you already start to think, wow, if I have an apple, it's sweet enough. That would be really good. Or um, you know, if I have um you know, a strawberry or a berry, like a low calorie berry, like blueberries or or raspberries, you even start to think, wow, that would be pretty sweet. And often it is once you break your fast. So that's what's really good about starting the fasting process because you're, you reset your taste buds, your desire for certain foods changes, and that's good towards helping you to plan food that's optimal for you, that serves you better. So let's see here. Um, okay. Ola Inca says, when I was in central of Mexico over the summer, there was such an availability of fresh veggies. So you um, were visiting in Mexico and you, you had much more fresh vegetables available than where you normally reside. And that's a great thing because you are then suddenly, you, you know, you have access to, to, to good food, to good quality food that serves you better. So in terms of your fat loss, that's helpful. If you decide to make the veggies or buy the veggies, that's another thing. Maybe it's just acknowledging that fresh veggies are available and, you know, that that's helpful is already maybe enough, then you know, okay, when I'm in Mexico and I'm on vacation and I'm still trying to watch my weight, then I know that there are going to be a lot more vegetables there. And that's more helpful for my diet than if I would be in, let's say, you know, the States or so when I go on vacation there to visit my family and I'm just like, wow, you know, look at all the stuff they have here that they don't have in Germany. And I'm just like, you know, fiending for everything. So, um, you know, it's, it's really helpful. It makes a big difference about the selection of foods available, depending on where you, where you are. Um, oh, and actually Mexico, I would love to go to Mexico. I have not been to Mexico. I'm really wanting to go. My um, daughter is, um, she's a a model part-time and she um, is possibly um, you know, if she gets this one job, um, uh, possibly going to go to Mexico and, um, I'm going to see if I can sort of travel with her (laughs) piggyback off of her opportunity, her trip and, and go there. That would probably be a big, um, you know, vacation for everyone because, you know, we rarely, we, we don't see my, my family as often as we should or could. And so, um, maybe the entire family here, you know, my kids and their partners or whatever would then go. And, um, you know, it's an expensive, expensive trip to go to the States with everyone. And, you know, we stay with my family, but of course, you know, if you're going on vacation, then you want to check out other places and really have a vacation. So after the family visit, then you might want to go, you know, to other places and Mexico would be for me, number one on on the list. Last time we went, we went to Puerto Rico, loved it, loved it, loved it. And I would love to go to, to Mexico. So yeah, maybe you have some things that you can share about Mexico, what your favorite spots were, what was going down to Mexico, where you were. And yeah, I would love to know about that. Okay. Um, you were in central Mexico, but you know, maybe there's a particular uh, city. Uh, let's see here. Um, Mazuba says supermarket supermarkets are conveniently located there. 
in South Africa. There's a variety of organic and many others. Great meat producers, products are, sorry, meat products are expensive. Okay. It is easy to buy in bulk and cook meals in advance. That's good. Um, first of all, there are different nuances there. First of all, that meat products are expensive depending on where you are. If you, where you are with your eating, if you're vegan or non-vegan, um, you know, could be an advantage because you're maybe less likely to buy as much meat as you would if it would be cheaper, which helps you with maybe, you know, um, increasing the amount of veggies, plants and veggies you have in your diet. Um, it is easy to buy in bulk. That's great. And it's probably even cheaper to do so as it is in the States or here. If you buy in bulk, then you get a better rate per unit. And, and that is good in terms of saving money in the long run. But also uh, buying in bulk is great because, yeah, you can if you can freeze a lot of the products that you're getting. But also in terms of meal prep, um, yeah, cooking in advance, batch cooking, that's really, really great. And that's good also for those of us in the community who are, you know, using these types of tools, you know, meal prepping and batch cooking to prevent us from grabbing for the processed foods. Because when you cook in advance, really good, tasty, rich food that you love, and you have all the nutrients in there that you need, you know, um, you know, you build a, a meal or create a meal that has everything in there and it tastes good. And you can, you know, prepare the meals in advance and have a lot readily available, then that's really great tool to keep you on track and to keep you consistent. So um, organic is very expensive. You said there's a variety of organic supermarkets. Um, and, and, you know, again, depending on your uh, shopping behavior, if you're uh, typically uh, buying foods that are organic, you know, there's a whole uh, culture and behavior behind that. And, and um, you know, you may be convinced that that is the types of foods that you would prefer to, to buy. And I think that's great and wonderful. And then there are those of us who maybe uh, do sort of like a mix of organic, depending on what type of food it is, if it's veggies or fruits or, you know, the, the top 12 or whatever, um, then that have to actually be organic or that make sense to buy organically, you know, the 12 top best organic uh, produce that are healthiest for us. Um, like it doesn't make sense necessarily to buy organic sugar as it is to buy organic broccoli, you know, or organic, you know, potatoes. It has um, obviously a much better impact on our health. So depending on where you are with that, then organic could be, you know, a, um, a positive or it could be um, difficult because, yeah, maybe it's too expensive. You, um, you know, don't have um, access to foods that are more um, accessible you know, in terms of price, but it looks like you have a mix. And so you seem pretty um, supported where you are. And yeah, South Africa, I mean, you have everything there that you need, obviously. But um, yeah, as long as you feel as though you're not tempted with all of, you know, like huge selections of food, like crazy, like is in the US, then that's maybe a good thing. Olayinka says, I'm back in the States now and those same types of vegetables are expensive. <laughs> yes, the States are crazy expensive. I'm telling you, thank you for confirming. Much more expensive than I'm even willing to pay in a lot of cases. Like I literally will be like, you know, <laughs> is this okay? You know, do, do I really want to spend that much money on this? food or on these vegetables? Can I get it cheaper anywhere else? Like I really noticed and notice when I'm there, how expensive the food can be. And I'm, I'm salty. I have to say I'm salty most of the time when I go into the store and I'm trying to buy something that I normally can get here much cheaper and it costs so much money there. I'm like, come on, y'all. Can't you help us out a little bit with the prices? I mean, that's a little bit too much for me. Okay. So Mazuba says she feels lighter. Okay. You're referring to my questions about um, your symptoms and how you feel now. 
physically as you know after having started with the fast and she says she feels lighter her hunger pangs are worse in the evening <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. it's at the end of the day and you know my immediate tip for that and I know it's going to sound crazy but to go to sleep earlier like if you're if you're really realizing like you've shut your window, your eating window, and you've eaten, you think, um, enough nutrients for the day. If you're really, really super hungry and you feel like you haven't gotten all the nutrients that your body needs, then I would have a little snack of something. And I mentioned this in one of my videos. I suggest like, um, you know, like three, literally like three or four walnuts because you quickly can, um, you know, or, or other types of food because walnuts have, you know, fat in them and they can help with curbing your appetite a little bit or other, um, I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily just start eating nuts because they're high calorie and, um, there it's, you know, um, works against our fat loss. But if you have a few, then that might help you or just going to sleep earlier because, Sometimes just having a reset and being like, okay, you know, let me just end this day before you start to eat crazy, depending on how bad they are and when you start to notice them. I wouldn't say if you're feeling them at like, you know, uh, four o'clock or five o'clock in the evening um, to go to bed at that time is, is not necessarily recommendable for you, um, you know, because that might throw off your sleeping routine. Uh, going to bed early and getting up early is very good. Um, and staying on that rhythm for your circadian rhythms and for eating habits and for menopausal women in general. Um, but if, you know, let's say you're starting to notice them around six, then I would maybe eat or seven, sorry. You know, I would consider, um, okay, maybe I should go to bed in another hour, like, you know, seven or eight or nine o'clock rather than staying up at 10 or 11 and seeing what you can do up into that time before you actually go to sleep, like maybe taking another walk or watching, you know, a really good engaging movie or reading a book or something like this that you can distract yourself up until the time, maybe even taking a bath where you, you know, are not up and about and can still go to the kitchen and eat something or grab something to eat while you're watching TV or reading a book or something like that. But maybe even taking a bath and relaxing a little bit might be good because you don't have access to the kitchen um, and you can really calm down, maybe in the tub reading a book, distract yourself and, but at the same time comforting yourself so that you're okay with going through this period of, of um, abstaining from food. Okay, and Ola Inca says, I went to Mexico City to CDMX and a town about three hours north of CDMX called Guanajuato. Um, Guanajuato, maybe? Guanajuato is about an hour away from San Miguel, San Miguel de Allende. I'm, I know I'm butchering this up. Um, I was scouting the area for future potential. Oh, could it be? Ola Inca, that you might be moving to Mexico soon? Do tell. Um, I really want to check out Mexico. We're here in Germany. And, um, you know, once we moved here, the kids have grown up. And it's really hard to sort of re, you know, to uproot everything. Um, I just had two grandbabies within 10 weeks of each other. So um, I'm pretty much, you know, rooted here for right now. But the idea of moving to an area where you have, um, you know, maybe especially compared to the U.S., especially compared to the U.S., is always, for me, very enticing. And Germany right now, um, there are a lot of, um, you know, maybe things about Germany that were challenging for me in the beginning or that are maybe, you know, you know, every once in a while, things may come up that are a little bit bothersome about about Germany, you know, as as an um, an expat. But for the most part, there are a lot of great things, um, a lot of, um, you know, things in terms of their social system and their healthcare system that we really benefit from as a family. And so I wouldn't necessarily, you know, just leave uh, now. But the idea of going to another country is for me 
always very, um, yeah, it's, it's very, very exciting. And I hope that you find the best place there, you know, the place that where you can really settle. Um, Mizuba says, yes, I went to bed early last night. So it, did it help? Did you notice that it help <laughs> to stop you from going into your, uh, you know, for, for uh, keeping your window, eating window open? Um, I would suggest that, you know, when it's really difficult and you just need to separate yourself, you know, from the kitchen or having access to it, just, you know, okay, let me just brush my teeth because that will also prevent you or not, you know, it will uh, reduce the chances that you're going to grab something from the kitchen. Um, and then, yeah, call it a day, go to bed and then start the day anew and be excited about the food that you're going to have on the next day. Um, that always helped me and helps me when I think about it. Like right now I am on the second day and I'm already starting to look for recipes that I'm going to make when I break my fast. That helps me to, you know, really get excited again about eating and also to think about the target you know, my results, like, okay, I can do it. And this is what I'm going to reward myself with, not necessarily processed food that of course not, but food that I enjoy. That's really good. Now that my um, taste buds are reset, they, it doesn't necessarily have to be high palatable foods um, that get me, you know, excited and happy and um, looking forward to, to eating again. But um, yeah, that's something that kind of helps me. Uh, Muzuba says, I still woke up hungry this morning. I know. <laughs> and of course you're, you're going to, and yeah. Um, okay. As you continue on what I noticed from me, and this is a really big, um, tip and I, and I assume that it could be helpful for a lot of people and that maybe you notice it as you continue on with your fasting cycle. But, um, the more you fast and the more your body adapts to it, the easier the fasting periods become. And that means that you will start to fast or maybe even get more comfortable with fasting longer because you're aware, aware of your hunger signals. You're more aware of your hunger signals and you're aware of whether or not, you know, um, you are truly hungry. In other words, um, or if possibly you're dehydrated, so always make sure you're drinking um, as well as much as possible. But you don't, it's easier for you not to eat when you're in the fasting cycle than it is for you to stop eating when you're in the eating window, if that makes sense. So when you're fasting, once you started and you're in the flow, it's easier to continue on with it and maybe even extend it once you get more comfortable with it than it is at any time when you get in your eating window and you start eating and then you shut your eating window. That shutting the eating window at the end is sometimes difficult, especially later when other habits that you may have sitting in front of the TV or hanging out, you know, with friends and wanting to have maybe, you know, a glass of wine or, you know, a snack here and there, some ice cream, those habits that we had or, or have, um, depending on how long our eating window is, you know, maybe your eating window stops much earlier and you're not, you know, you're, you're not having wine or, or ice cream or dessert or what have you after dinner, maybe it goes longer and it's likely that you may meet with friends and have a glass of wine or, you know, have food that is, um, you know, triggering for you, then it can be difficult. But as long as you're having as many nutrients as possible, um, and that means food that is really nutrient dense, you know, like, like broccoli, for example, or um, complex carbs, like beans, lentils with pr protein in them, um, chickpeas or kidney beans, spinach, um, you know, food that's rich with nutrients, then your body will have what it needs. You know, you'll also reach your calorie um, requirements for the day, but with a much richer diet full of vitamins and minerals that your body needs. And you'll therefore be 
less hungry than if you would be if you would have, let's say, and this is not the case for you, but have a very poor diet where you're at the end very hungry because you had mostly carbs and simple carbs at that, like breads or, or rice, you know, white rice. Now, these things you can have with your current diet as long as it's not the, um, you know, the product, like the, the main source of your food. If it's like supplements, you have a little bit here and there. And, um, you know, I talk a little bit about building a plate in, in one of my courses, but until then, you know, try to eat as much um, nutrient dense foods as possible so that when you shut your eating window, you're not triggered to continue to eat because your blood sugar is stable. So it's all about eating food, protein, a lot of protein, whether it's animal or non animal um, fat and protein is good for stabilizing the, the sugar as well. So you want to have this type of these types of foods included in your meal so that when you shut your eating window, you're not triggered as much as you would be because your blood sugar is stable. Um, Masuba says, okay, woke up hungry. Um, oh, okay. She says, I got myself very busy in the office. I forgot about the hunger. Yes. The problem is I manage a cafe at my workplace. Oh, and there is food all the time. Hmm. Yeah, that's difficult. That's difficult when you are around food and it's available, especially when you're fasting and you are getting closer to your eating window, <laughs> or maybe you're, you're, um, you know, you're at the end of your fast or your eating window is finished and the cafe is available. Cause Hey, let's see, you said, I think you were 10 to six, right? Or were you 12 to 8? I can't remember which um, cycle you had, but depending, it could be that, yeah, when you're coming off of your fast and you're getting close to your eating window and you're around food, then it might be easy to open your eating window much earlier than you normally would have um, because you, you know, have it available and it's very tempting. But you could also, um, yeah, what could you do? other than just continuing to drink water or tea during that time, maybe, um, you know, do something that can distract you while you're there. Cause I don't know the circumstances. I don't know how the cafe is and how flexible you are there, what you can do, whether it's going on your phone and maybe reading, listening to a podcast in between, um, you know, customers. I'm not quite sure of what the circumstances are, but can, continuing to come up with strategies that can help you to distract you is the easiest to get you over the um, those periods where you're hungry. You know, um, like I said, I look at cookbooks in my meantime, I get, can go a really long time during the day without even really thinking about it because I'm distracted with other things. And that typically helps me get over it. But once it hits a certain period of time, and maybe everyone's kind of eating around me or I smell food, even when I'm on my walk and I go past houses or play, or apartments or whatever, and I smell food, I am triggered. So it really is managing your habits and managing you know, your activities in such a way that you remain distracted and keeping your focus off of the food. That's the best way to do it. So I'm rooting for you in the cafe, right? Your eating window was from 10 to six. Yeah. So that is, that's a tricky one, but that's, yeah, depending. Cause when you woke up, I don't know how long before, like when you wake up or what time you have to go to work when your um, job starts and everything. But um, it could be that once you're settled, you get to, to work and it's like, let's say eight o'clock and you got two hours before you can eat again, then it can be hard, especially if you're working and, you know, you have to be high performance and you're hungry and your concentration is down. Then often your performance is down as well. So it can be hard to sort of navigate that. But um, doing what you can in terms of distraction, you know, possibly, um, you know, especially when you're at work, uh, I don't know, maybe going to a colleague and saying, uh, depending on, you know, where, where you are, let's have a quick 
you know, um, tea or water together. Um, you may even say, decide that you want to have coffee without any fat in it or um, something that will not necessarily trigger, um, you know, or stop your fast, you know, that, like fats and proteins and that kind of stuff. Even if we supplement that in certain drinks or whatever can immediately stop our fast and our metabolic switching is then interrupted. So we don't want to have or introduce any foods that will do that. But um, yeah, that that <laughs> finding a way to navigate those periods um, is a an art, and um, possibly the, the um, ideas in the fasting guide could have helped you if you if you've already read it or used them. Um, but sleeping earlier and then when you wake up, um, trying to engage in some type of activity. Podcasts are also really good that will distract you from thinking about the food. And Mizuba says, I get to work at 6.30. Ooh, girl, that's a long haul. 6.30 to 10. Yeah, that's a good three and a half hours before you um, can eat again. Um, I would suggest that what I mentioned and let me know tomorrow during our call if any of that has helped. I'm rooting for you guys. Um, I'm going to bring the call now to an end. And I hope that tomorrow you join me again. It will be the last day of the fast and we'll go a little bit more over other um, <laughs> things in the fasting guide, which I did very little of today. I'll try to focus on that more tomorrow. Again, thank you so much for um, the all of you who have subscribed now to this channel, the over a thousand um, women that we have in this community. I'm so happy about it. And I'm looking forward to speaking with you and sharing with you again tomorrow. So have a good rest of your day, a good um, fast, depending on where you are, if you're still in your fasting cycle or not, um, or if you're in your eating window, like I think Kamitha was, um, then, you know, enjoy your feast. And um, I wish you all the best for closing that eating window and sticking to it for continuing to commit to your um, fast. I want to know more tomorrow about other experiences that you have, and I'm looking forward to it. You guys are such a great group. Thank you so much for engaging in the live chat and feeling comfortable to share your experiences and your activities that you're doing. And um, yeah, it's great for me to get to know you more and to learn how you are going on in your fat loss journey. So I wish you all the best. Um, I will see you or hear from you and talk with you again tomorrow. Thanks a lot again. Take care.